Okay. Hi, I'm Rayana Starr with Jackie Grossman or Grossman? Grossman. 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 And I'm doing a fempreneur interview with Jackie. And it's funny, we're just, we were just chit chatting before I started the recording that she lives in Oceanside in San Diego County in California. And I lived there, but we never met each other. And now I'm in Asheville, North Carolina. And she just recently drove through here and we still hadn't met. It was through this group, Empowering Women Entrepreneurs to Succeed in Business, that we met. It was because of a mutual friend of ours who introduced her to the group. And she's been one of our, almost one of our charter members. She's been with the group for about six months. She's been watching us grow. She's been liking what she's seeing. She hasn't been someone you see a lot. She doesn't engage or comment a lot, but recently she wanted to take me up on this offer of a fempreneur interview. And I wanted to ask you why, what was it about doing this interview that was appealing to you, Jackie? I love talking to people. So when you said you want to interview me, I was like, yes, because I absolutely love meeting people. I find it, I find everybody's got a story and that's really interesting to me. And then I also wanted to uh, share what I do because in what I do, a lot of it is involved in talking to people, you know, and exploring the soul and exploring the spirit on such a deep level and on a level that you rarely have the opportunity to do. And that's, that's what's so, I think, special about the regression work that I do. Okay. So we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. So you live in Oceanside. Um, yeah. In, in North County coastal San Diego. Yeah. You're married. You have a son and a daughter, daughter yeah. to Tennessee, which had you drive through my part of the country. What yeah. did you think of this area? Oh my gosh. It is. So we visited my, my sister who lives in Raleigh, North Carolina, my husband and I, and then we rented it. We stayed there for a few days, which we had a wonderful time at Raleigh. And the one thing I noticed about North Carolina is that everything is behind the trees. So like here you see a lot of like, you're driving down the street, you see a lot of billboards and stuff, but everything in North Carolina, there's like trees and then behind the trees is like the houses and the businesses and all of that. And I thought that was fascinating and beautiful. We hiked in the woods, um, which I loved. And um, I kept thinking of like Ralph Waldo Emerson. And I kept thinking about like Thoreau and when they lived in the woods and some of their poetry, which I've read, which is beautiful. Um, you know, like two paths diverge in the woods. And, you know, I took the one that was less traveled. I only I quoted that quite right, but you know what I mean? I do um, I use that phrase a lot. Yeah. It's a, it's a wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, um, and then we drove through Asheville, which was super funky and adorable. Like, just like my husband said, he goes, it's kind of like a Berkeley of the South. It is. <laughs> I was going to say that earlier when we were talking is when I try and describe Asheville, because you could walk Asheville in one day, the downtown area. It's yeah. not a big city. And it has that Berkeley, Ash, Haightberry, you know, kind of vibe to it. Yeah. Totally, totally. It really does. Um, so we, and then Tennessee, where my daughter is, she's in uh, about 30 miles outside of Nashville. And like when she got the opportunity to get a job there, it just felt right. And I was like, you got to take, we were both saying, you got to take this. And, um, and she loves it there. She it? loves it. And even she had to go get like all her DMV and all that stuff taken care of the other day. And she goes, mom, they told me I had to go to the county clerk to get my car registration. And I thought, oh my gosh, I don't have an appointment, you know, cause in California you need an appointment for everything. She goes, and I just walked up and like, nobody was there. And they were just like, Hey, come on in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you noticed a difference in people? In the, in the South. Yeah, when we came, when we were driving um, and we, we were on this two lane highway in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, um, we were almost to her house. Like the people in front of us were driving very slow, in our opinion. It was probably very normal for them. But for <laughs> us, because in California, we're just like, you know, there's nobody on the road, go as fast as you can. And Everybody there, it wasn't like that at all. all. More laid back. And so we're like, okay. So we kind of sat back in our chairs and just, enjoyed the ride because it was beautiful. Yeah, I've lived in Asheville for a couple of years now. 
and I think I've been honked at twice. Oh. People in, in, in two years, you know, people are very friendly and mm -hmm. polite. And when people ask, ask you how you're doing, they actually are asking you, how are you doing? Wow. And looking you in the eye and waiting for an answer, like they slow down to connect with someone. Oh, wow. Yeah. Love that. I love that. Yeah, it's it's amazing. If, if people haven't been to the South or been to that part of the South, I would really suggest visiting it because the people and the beauty of the land is pretty incredible. Um, yeah. We were, we were saying it looks like you're in Hawaii when we found waterfalls and hiked by the waterfalls and all of that. And um, I had no idea all of that existed down there. Gorgeous. Yeah, we're, where I live in the Blue Ridge Mountains, and then if you get on the Tennessee side, it's the Smoky Mountains, mm -hmm. but they're both just part of the Appalachian Mountains. Tennessee side, it's Smoky Mountains. North Carolina side, it's Blue Ridge Mountains. It's a, it's a rainforest, the Appalachian um, mountain trail, which goes from the south down in, in Georgia in South Carolina and comes all the way up and goes up into the Northeast, like the Pacific Crest Trail. It's the East version of that. Yeah. It is a temperate rainforest, like it's rainy here today. But what's unlike, say, Florida and the deep Southeast is or like in the Pacific Northwest where it's always gloomy. Yeah. Here it in one day it'll be sunny and then the next minute it's raining and then it's sunny again. You know, we noticed that. Yeah, we noticed that. It was like we got up one morning and we were gonna we hiked and it was sunny and beautiful. And then about three o'clock the clouds came in. We had a really good downpour for about 30 minutes. And then uh, it was sunny. Yeah. <laughs> Not gloomy here. It's actually delightful. And my favorite thing about this area is that there's a, it's very, you can get very cheap, free, very effective therapy here. It's called tree tunnel therapy. Yeah. All you have to do is drive on one of these street roads that go on forever into nowhere in the middle of the forest or the mountain and it soothes your soul. Soothes well, when my, my sister is very much into hiking in the woods, she always has been ever since we were little kids. And so when I was with her and we were hiking and we were hiking in the woods or walking in the woods, I should say. And um, I was feeling kind of tired that morning, a little jet lag, you know, and uh, 20 minutes in, I'm like talking her ear off because I felt so alive from all those trees <laughs> and all that, that energy. Ionization, you're dispersing yes. all that positive charge. Yes. And just your 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 body, your soul, your mind, you're just getting pinged with all this uh you know, de-stressing. You know. And did you know, and you may, you may know this, you probably do. Um, so I follow this Dr. Zach Bush, who I love him. He's a really interesting guy. He talks a lot about filling up, um, like, you know, enhancing your microbiome, you know, all the, all the bacteria, all the fungi that live on your body. And you get a lot of that just from walking through the forest, the diversity of plant life and, and um, the dirt and the water and everything that is there, you're breathing that all in. Breathing and, it deep with your mouth and just smelling yeah. the earthiness of it all. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's good. I'm going to come out there and take a walk with you this afternoon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> come, out. come over a weekend sometime and I'll take you to a waterfall. We, my, my pal Deb and I uh, do waterfall hikes. We love them. Oh, so wow. we're doing this fempreneur interview with you because you've been in the group for a while and you do mm -hmm. really unique work. And I want to ask you, how did you get into past life regression work? How did you get into it? And then what is it about that work that's had you devote your life to that work? Yeah. So how did you get into it? Let's start there. So I have been, so about 30 years ago, I read the book, Many Lives, Many Masters by Brian Weiss. I don't know if you've, um, a lot of people have heard of that book. It was actually a bestseller. Um, and he was a, to sum up that book, 
he was a, a, a psychiatrist, a very prominent psychiatrist at Columbia. I mean, very like medically, you know, focused kind of guy. He had a patient come in to see him. She was trying to get over all kinds of phobias. She was agoraphobic, didn't want to leave her house. And, and um, he tried all these therapies and finally was like, I'm just going to try hypnotherapy because I don't know what else to do with her. But it was kind of like a last ditch effort. So he does a session with her and has her go back to the first time she felt all these fears. She goes back to the time when she's five years old in the present life, in her present life, and recalls a traumatic experience. And she comes out of the, of the hypnotic state and he feels really like, yeah, okay, we got this. Like she's going to get better. She comes back the next week. She's not any better. So he goes, okay, we're going to try the hypnosis again. So he does it again. And this is a man who never even thought of past lives. That wasn't even a part of his work. And he takes her back and she goes into, to much his surprise, the life of um, uh, like almost living, it was living in ancient Greece, it sounded like. And she was a, a young mother and there was a tidal wave headed for her village. And she was trying to save her baby. And she was in deep, deep panic. And not only does she not save her baby, but she herself drowns in this tidal wave. And his mouth is just like jaw to the floor. Like, I don't even know what to make of this. Yeah. And he, you know, finishes that regression with her, that experience. And he brings her out and he's like, okay, you know, so she leaves. And the next week she comes back and she's better. And he wow. goes, we're, yeah. So he keeps doing these sessions with her. And every time he does this and they recall different past life experiences, she's better. And when I read that book, I was hooked. I was like, oh my gosh, that makes perfect sense to me. Um, it just resonated with my soul. And actually what I've learned since then is that those emotional feelings that we have, those fears and phobias that we carry, but we don't know why we have them, are often their residue from previous lives. Because like, we can't really remember all our previous lives. That would be very confusing to us when we're trying to live this life. So when we're in the conscious state, like you and I just going along right now, we're not gonna remember when we were like living in Victorian England in 1865, that'd be so confusing. But when you go into a deep state of hypnotic regression, then you can recall those things. You know, it's interesting you bring this up Jackie, because I, um, I believe in past lives, uh, but it's not work that I've ever needed to do. I haven't needed it. It's like, okay, that's interesting, but I'm more about the future, the now. And so when I got trained as an NLP coach and practitioner, yeah. and then got triple certified in hypnotherapy, and timeline therapy in order to get trained you have to re you have to receive the work you have mm -hmm. to experience it which is to me where all the credibility was because it's like all right i gotta see if this shit works <laughs> right right <laughs> i've always been curious about nlp and hypnotherapy and all that and i thought well let's see and we would do it on each other in the training and I heard that people could get triggered into past lives and I was just rolling my eyes, you know? And then it happened to me. I, in an NLP session with just a beginner, someone like me who was in the training was guiding me through. And one of the questions you ask, and it was timeline therapy, which is a very effective tool for eliminating limiting beliefs. Yeah. You're asked at the beginning of the process, you know, um, to locate the first experience you had of when you experienced that limiting belief. Was it before, during, or after birth? That's where mm -hmm. you start. And I, I couldn't believe that was at more than once what came out of my mouth was before, because you're in a deep trance state you're accessing your unconscious mind. So it's not your logical mind filtering it out, judging, proofreading, criticizing, deleting. Yeah. And I just went with it. And I have 
had past life regression experiences before in breath work sessions. It, you know, those sessions that are putting you into a deep trance and getting you out of your analytical, calculating, conscious mind. And it has been powerfully healing. So it was healing to you. You had that experience. Well, it's, it's revealing yeah. and healing. Yes, yes. Yes, that's what that's really well said. It is revealing and healing. And if you like, I send. I I recently had a regress. Someone regressed me, um, and uh, I was listening to my recording the other day because I always send people away with a full recording of their regression. And I tell people, you really have to listen to your regression because it's sort of like a dream. Some people go very very deep and they don't remember anything. Some people will remember it when they when they come out or, and they're like, oh yeah, I remember everything I said, but then you walk away and you start to forget because it's like a dream. And I was listening to mine the other day and I went, oh my gosh, I really dropped some really amazing knowledge on myself. So there's so many levels that yeah. healing is going on. And the more you listen to what you said in that state, the deeper the healing goes. Yeah. And I think that that brings up something that it's very important as coaches guides, healers, counselors, um, mentors, um, that we do some sort of recording of mm -hmm. a process. Either you're taking notes and the client has access to them or you're recording a session because it helps you as the, as the practitioner to, to track the journey of your client, yeah. but it also helps the client to see that they're actually making progress. Yes, and yes. Like you said, you know, in the present moment, you're so enraptured in the experience, but then later on, what's the value you can pull from it? And reviewing, you, you get, it's like reading a good book or watching a good movie over and over, you catch things that you missed the first time. Uh, yes, yes. Like if I may share my my experience, what my regression was. So I went back to uh, Egypt, and I went, which many of us have had lives in Egypt. Egypt was a pretty massive, uh, you know, population. A lot of a lot of us passed through there, and I was there, and I was doing healing work um, with other women in Egypt. It was a very uh, matriarchal kind of group I was involved in, and uh, when I when I can't listen to the recording recently, I could not believe the detail I went into. I talked about working on the solar plexus. I talked about wearing gold because gold had a very, very high vibration. I talked about some kind of jewels that were like on top of a pyramid that um, were also sort of like this communication system and like things I really never have thought about before. So uh, that's the you other thing that you didn't even know about. Right. I didn't even know. I didn't even know about. And uh, so that was pretty. And when I came out and I was talking to the practitioner, she goes, you were really there. And I'm like, oh, was I? You know, because when you're going through it, like I said, you don't right. really. And, but then when I went back and listened, right. when I went back and listened, I was like, whoa, wow, that's I didn't know, even though I said that. So it is important to listen to your recordings. Very important. Yeah. Yeah. So how long have you been like, tell us a little bit about the training to do that kind of work. Okay. So the training I, I did was through Dolores Cannon. Um, so she, when she was actually one of the people that, uh, that Brian Weiss studied, cause she had been doing the work since the sixties, um, the past life work. And her first book called five lives remembered was actually she wrote it in 1968 or maybe a little later. And it was actually published in 1980 because she kept getting denied by publishers. They didn't, they're like, no, we don't want to, we don't want to publish this book. No one's going to read it. And it's actually a fascinating book. So her training is called quantum healing hypnosis technique, because what she discovered as she did more and more of her work, and this really pertains to what you said a little earlier, people don't always go to a past life. Sometimes they go to a future life. Sometimes they go to a parallel life or a parallel universe because there's um, this one concept, one theory that our soul is so huge that it doesn't 
right now, like we're having this experience, but there's other parts of our soul that are having other experiences. Like parallel universe. I, I yes. have that experience many times. Parallel you have really. Experience. Yeah. Yeah. I'm intrigued. You know, there's a funny movie that Michael Keaton was in multiplicity did you ever see that movie i have heard of that movie but i haven't seen it sounds like i should see it we talked about this and it's funny he just keeps cloning himself and each version has it is just a little different than his and he's duplicating himself and they're all living different versions of his life it's funny that's that's a really cool uh sort of way to like yeah. explain that like because that's what it is like your soul my soul everybody's soul it's huge that's the name of my business which is big spirit little body which is a whole another story kind of fun <laughs> that's the name of your business that's the name of my business life yeah business pardon me your life regression business yes it's called big spirit little body because well for a few reasons but like our spirit is so huge and like this physical body is really the densest part of us and so the soul wants to have many experiences so there is like i said there's like a, a concept that you're you know you and i are both having our our full totality of our soul is having a whole bunch of experiences right now but this is the one this part of the soul is tuned into and it took me a while to wrap my head around that but i think yeah. i'm starting to get it i mean this is all like time bending mind bending stuff absolutely yeah there's another movie astrin kutcher was in and it was the butterfly effect mm -hmm. and it was a bit dark because there was child abuse in it mm -hmm. but he keeps trying and the butterfly effect fact is the idea that if a butterfly flaps its wings that it's going to send you know eventually yeah everything's affected it affects yeah. everything's affected and <clears throat> whenever you see anything about time travel it's always don't change anything in the past because mm -hmm. it create a paradox yeah and he keeps going back to relive this butterfly effect to prevent this girlfriend of his from being abused mm -hmm. and and he just keeps I mean, actually, it's driving him crazy, all the different scenarios that he keeps living out. But um, that's what I love about more spiritual sci-fi types of types of books and shows. And I'm not a big sci-fi person, but there was a novel I read a long, long time ago, Stranger in a Strange Land. Did you read that? I haven't. So many goodies you're telling me about yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But so let me ask you. Other than like, what was the training in oh, okay. order for you to be qualified to do this? How long have you been doing it? And then when, I want to wrap up with one last question. Yeah, for sure. Right. Okay. So, um, so like I said, I've believed in past lives for about 30 years, um, but I've been this particular work I've been doing for about not that long, like about 18 months, I'm going to say. Okay. Because for a long time, I didn't really know how to get trained in it, uh, you know, and then a friend of mine said, oh, I'm going to do the QHHT Dolores Cannon training. Do you want to do it? And I was like, sure. And with this beautiful world today, you can do everything online, which is good and bad because you do it in your home and you don't get the connection of class, but it's more available to you. Right. So it's yeah. a little bit of both sides. So, uh, so I've been doing it for about 18 months and the training includes um, level one training, which is recorded from Dolores Cannon. And she actually passed away in 2013, but she talks about her journey of how this started and, and how to you know, deal with all sorts of situations that you deal with when people go into trance um, and also how to do it. Like you have, it's a long day when I work with somebody, well, it seems long, but it's not. It's like a, it can be like a six hour session because I spend about two hours sitting down and talking to somebody and telling them and just hearing their story. Who are you? Why are you here? All that. Then we go into the regression, which is about another two hours. And it, though the, both of those could be longer. And, and the regression is a specific induction that was created by Dolores Cannon. That's a style that is about a 20 minute induction to bring the person into the trance like or the relaxed state. My whole purpose is to just guide them through this process. 
I don't, what I love about this work is, and this is what I learned in my training. And I love this. I'm not doing the healing. No. I'm the guide. And I love that because everybody has all the healing they need. You're providing right there. a safe space for it to happen. Yeah. You're not making anything happen. You're letting I'm, it happen. Exactly. I'm letting it happen. My role is to guide them. My role is to keep them in the part of their mind that's allowing them to access this information. Um, that's my whole purpose. Keep them safe. And I, and that was the primary purpose of the training. Like that's what you must learn, which I love because I get on my own healing to do. I, I'm totally happy guiding people through. Plus I think that's a very humbling way to help people heal, you know, like that's how you really help people heal. You, you help them tap into their own healing. Like anybody who's like, I'm going to heal you. I'm a like, healer. Right. That makes me a little nervous because right. that, that a lot of times it comes from ego and I don't mean to insult anybody, but a lot of times that comes from ego and I'm, I'm about being humble. My job is to guide you. You know, you've been living your yeah, life the whole time. Is the star of the story. Not They're you. the star. Exactly. I know I'm digressing. I guess it didn't really answer your question. No, you're not digressing. <laughs> you are answering it. So okay, good, good. Went to the source, got your training from her. Right, right. How long have you been doing this professionally now? So professionally, I've been doing it about a year. So not that long. You've been a believer for 30 years, but why did it take you so long, do you think, to actually do it as your work? That's a good question. Hold on. I'm going to close my office door because I hear my husband just came home and I hear he's on the phone. He talks loud. One sec. Okay. Be right back. Okay. So um, I... I think there is a couple of reasons. First of all, I was raising, we were raising our two children and I, and I did massage during that. And, and I still do massage during that entire time that we were raising our children. And that gave me an avenue to have a very flexible schedule and to still be able to go to all their baseball and softball games and all that good stuff. Uh, and so this work takes a lot of time and energy, which I'm good with now. And I had always said that once my children grew up um, and, you know, went away to college and I was empty nesting, which is now, uh, I would really undertake the spiritual work 100%. I just go good full for force. You. For yeah. You, you made that promise to yourself and then you waited until the time was right and you honored that promise to yourself. Good I did. I did. Yeah. But but I've been a student of spirituality like my entire life. So yeah. I feel like everything I've done has moved me towards this work. Yeah, good. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. You're gonna say so and it makes it richer too that you've had other experiences. <laughs> and I'm sure the massage work add adds to this. Yes, big time. So let me ask you. What is, what is the main benefit for someone? Why would someone bother hiring you or anybody else to do a life, a past life regression? What's the benefit to doing that? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's quite a few benefits. I'd say the first one would be if you do have a fear or a phobia or something that continues to present itself in this life. This work gives you the opportunity to explore where that came from, uh, but at the, and at the same time, it also gives you the opportunity to tune into your gifts. Like, what did you bring here into this life oh. to cultivate? So there's two sides. Like you might be kind of minimizing something, like, well, I don't have any formal training, or no, 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 and then you find out in past life regression that you were like the queen of la 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 and yeah <clears throat> that that is an innate gift of yours right like i had a um a woman that i worked with that very much wanted to work um in in herbs and also um like photography of nature and things <laughs> like that and um when we went she's like i'm just drawn to this like i can't not be drawn to this and when we went back to her previous life she goes because you come off a cloud right that's part of the regression and I go okay tell me where you are now and she was like she goes I'm home and I go well, what do you mean and she goes I'm home and I'm here with my parents 
but they're not earth parents. I'm somewhere else. And there's flowers everywhere and there's wildlife everywhere. And I can't tell you where I'm at, but it's not earth. And, um, you know, but it was like this connect, you know, she saw her connection to, cause she goes, there's, I'm in this, like, um, this, uh, field of, of flowers and, and like, she just kept saying that. And, you know, so we came out and sort of drew the, well, we did a lot of work after that and sort of concluded, like, this is just a very deep part of her soul is that connection right. to flowers, to nature, to the alchemy of nature. Now you said something about past life regression can be a tool for healing. Mm -hmm. Say more about that. How, what would you say the number one benefit is? Is it healing, getting insight that can heal you? Yeah, I would say yes. If I had to answer that simply, I would say yes. And when I say healing, it could be on a physical level, it could be on a spiritual level, it could be on an emotional level. And all of that's connected anyway. You know, oh. the body very much speaks to you. And that's why when a person comes in, I'll ask them about their physical symptoms because quite often, that'll be one of the first questions, quite often they'll find the physical symptoms are very much linked to what's happening emotionally and spiritually. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So exactly. Look, when I post this into the group, Jackie, I want you to, in the comments, comment, be the first comment, and give us your contact information, your website, or your calendar link, or whatever. Um, there's a dog or a kitty that's creeped in over to you, behind you. Um, <laughs> I have that happen here too. I love, it. I love it when I see people's animals, kids in the background. I get on coaching calls with clients and their kids always want to say, I want to say hi to Miss Rayana. <laughs> uh, so drop your contact information. Ladies, if you have a fear or a phobia that's plagued you, that stopped you, like a fear of flying or you know, just a fear of rabbits or something like that. There's something that you've carried with you your whole life that you can't seem to shake. Maybe you need to talk to Jackie and get a deeper healing experience around that that may just give you so much relief, like who she was talking about, that woman with this, this guy who was doing hypnosis work with her and didn't do past life but she would get better because she was going through these past, past life regressions. Jackie has a passion for this, obviously. And so please reach out to her and schedule uh, a time to connect with her and learn more. And before we wrap up, Jackie, what I wanna ask is what's your rooftop message? What is the message that you want people to take away from this that if they were to hear it, they would heed it? Mm, that's a great question. You know, um, I think what I would want to say, or what I do want to say, is, uh, you know, all things are possible, all timelines are available to us, we're constantly pivoting to different timelines. So what I mean by that is nothing is really set in stone, all anything is available to us. And by exploring our past lives, and you know, the journey our soul has taken, we widen and we expand our possibilities of the future because we're willing to look at the past and we're willing to learn from it. And that's why I would suggest everybody get a past life regression because it can benefit you in infinite ways. And when I sit down with you and we spend a whole day exploring you, um, you don't really get that in this world ever, you know, yeah, like someone who's just providing the space for you to show for up you, for that's you safe without judgment. It can be a very validating experience. I Thank really you. appreciate you joining me today, Jackie, and taking me up on the, the invitation to do this interview. Who's next? Who wants the next fempreneur interview, fempreneur interview? Now people are starting to get onto this and I'm going to have to limit how much, I, how many I do a week. I'm going to do three a week. So who's next? I've got 
two or three of you already scheduled for next week. I want to thank you so much, Jackie. What's what's the name of your business again? The name of my business is Big Spirit Little Body. And I have a website, bigspiritlittlebody.com. Yeah, and then I want you to drop a link to that. When you see this post go live, right. go ahead and promote. All right, Definitely. ladies, thank you. pitching and promoting doesn't work. But having someone interview you live and showcase your superpowers does, or sharing your story. What do I mean by sharing stories? Putting yourself in a scenario like Jackie did here. She didn't pitch or promote her service at all. She talked about her experience and what was meaningful about it and, and how she had been on a quest her whole life. Sharing stories of your own experience and an insight that you gained from it or maybe a pain that you overcame or a challenge and how you got to the other end of that. Those are inspiring anecdotes for all of us that will draw people to you and attract them to you rather than pitching and promoting. Pitching and promoting is all about you getting something. When you tell a story, it's about something that you're giving a value and that's gonna attract people to you. So please introduce yourselves, tell us who you are, where you're from, why you do what you do and for who and how. Share on a deeper, more personal, intimate level. Let's connect, lift each other up and transform the way we do business. I'm Rayana Starr with Empowering Women Entrepreneurs to Succeed in Business with Jackie Gro Grossman, who is a past life regressionist. Okay, check in with Kathy. She can help you heal by revealing Maybe something that's been so obvious, but that you haven't been able to get access to. Thanks so much, Jackie, for joining me. It's been really great connecting with you. You're welcome. I love talking to you, Rihanna. Thank you so much. <laughs> this won't be our last time, I'm sure. Oh, definitely not. I'm okay. probably going to be passing through your town. <laughs> Good. I hope you do. We'll hike to a waterfall together. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.